I'll show you how easy it is to make wrap around egg carton stones and a dry method for grouting that doesn't affect the color of your stones. I'm making a stone fireplace hearth to cover the spot on the floor and that starts with harvesting some egg carton. Egg cartons have this really great natural stone texture so I'm just cutting up my egg cartons to use the flat bits. You can find a similar texture on other paper pulp products, so keep your eyes peeled. I want the stones to wrap around my hearth, so I'm making a mark in a shallow cut line so I can fold them over the edge. Folding the end over the hearth will make it look like one thick piece of stone. I cut a rectangle of scrap cardboard to use as the hearth base that I'll attach the stones to. You could also use this wraparound method on the corner of a building. Rather than making individual stones, I cut some strips of egg carton so the stones will be the same width, and then I marked and cut the length as I went. It's completely optional, but just to keep the stones looking a little more organic, I went along with my X-Acto knife and shaved the edges. This removes the really blunt cut that's created by an X-Acto knife or scissors. I started out using Fabri-Tac to attach the stones, but I had to hold the edges in place too long, so I later switched to hot glue. I intentionally left the overhang a bit too long because it's a lot easier to cut off the excess rather than try to get a perfect fit. Then I attached the stones straight across, making sure to shave the edges first to give them a more natural look and leave a small grout line between them. I'm cutting my stones into rectangle shapes and later I color them to look like slate. You can choose a different pattern for laying out your stones, but if you're grouting them with powder, just make sure you keep the grout line small. As I laid the stones across the back row, there was a small amount of overhang and I fixed it just by trimming it off with my X-Acto knife from the back. When I reached the other corner, I finished it off with a wraparound stone and cut off the excess. I'll show you a different method for finishing off the front corner stones since they're visible on two sides, the front and the side. For the second row, I staggered the stones like bricks, shaved all of the edges, and wrapped them around the ends. When I started on the first row, I initially attached the corner stone by folding it over the end, which left the front corrugation visible. I intended to cover it with a strip of egg carton later, but I end up removing it and come up with a much better solution. To fix this awkward cornerstone, I started by removing most of it with my X-Acto knife. The hot glue held on really well. To cover the front and side of the corner pieces, I glued on a large rectangle making sure to allow for the grout line and some overhang on the front and side. Then I cut a small square from the corner and using hot glue folded the two flaps over and once the glue took I cut off the excess. This made for a really tidy corner that looks even better when it's painted and I repeated the steps on the other corner. For applying color to the stones I'm using three washes in yellow, black, and blue. To make the washes I mixed a small amount of acrylic paint with some water. For adding color to the stones, I focused on the yellow ochre wash as a background and added small amounts of the black and blue wash. Using watered down paint and applying the colors over one another while they're still wet allows the colors to flow into one another and feather very naturally. Keep in mind the colors will dry lighter than when you apply them. Once the stones dry, you need to seal them and I used some matte Mod Podge. You could also use Gloss Mod Podge, any type of PVA glue or water-based sealer like polycrylic. When I add the dry powder to create the grout lines, you'll see how this coat of sealer protects the original color of the stones. This coat of sealer also makes the colors richer and makes it look more like it did when the paint was still wet. As I'm spreading the Mod Podge, I make sure to remove the excess from the grout lines and seal the wraparound stone edges. 
When you paint Mod Podge onto a flat surface, you can clearly see the brush stroke lines, but it's not visible on the stonework. Now it's time to apply the grout, and I'm using a dry method with Plaster of Paris. And to protect my lungs, I'm wearing a dust mask. To apply the grout, I just sprinkle it on with my hand, making sure to spread it into my grout lines. I'm pressing the powder in to compact it into the cracks. This method works best on small grout lines like the ones I created. To remove the excess grout, I use a paintbrush which makes me feel like an archaeologist. You can patiently brush each stone one at a time, or you can just take broad swiping motions left to right like I did. This is why I'm wearing a mask, because some of the dust gets into the air. After I brush away most of the plaster of Paris, I use a damp paper towel to scrub it out of the texture of the egg carton stones. Removing the white grout from the texture of the stone makes it look more natural, but don't feel like you have to run out and buy plaster of Paris. I'll explain to you how to achieve a similar result using spackle. After a couple minutes of removing the excess grout, I spray it with rubbing alcohol and watered down glue. The rubbing alcohol breaks the surface tension and allows the watered down glue to get in between the tiny powder particles. If you don't have rubbing alcohol, you can just use the water and glue mixture. Just make sure that you completely saturate your grout lines to hold it in place. Once I'm sure all my grout lines have received some glue, I remove the excess glue and water mixture with a paper towel. No matter what method you choose for making your egg carton stones, the final step should almost always be dry brushing because it really brings out the texture and makes them look like natural stones. I'm using a dry brush and some cream colored paint on a silicone mat to add my dry brushing. Dry brushing highlights the highest points, so make sure you choose a color that's lighter than your stones for contrast. The key for adding grout without changing the color of the stones is to seal them before grouting, so you can achieve similar results with spackle by just sealing the stones, adding the spackle, and wiping off the excess. To change the color of the grout, you can apply a wash. If you don't want the wash to affect the color of the stones, make sure you wipe it off of the stones after you apply it and before it dries. I'm using this particular hearth in what's supposed to be a kitchen from the 1800s, so I left the brown wash on the surface of my stones to make them look older. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a like and maybe even a comment. And if you're new to the channel, I'm Shira from Queen City Minis. Thank you so much for watching.